So welcome to our Lunch and Learn. I believe this is our seventh Lunch and Learn. We've been doing these every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We started doing them probably about a month after the Vegas convention in August. Um, I'm sure some of you are at that. And that's when we released route stats and a lot of the different features that are a part of Pro, some new features that are a part of just the regular listing. So we've been doing this as a way to kind of just talk through route stats and not only what the different tabs are and how to use it, but also what some of these numbers mean to your business and what changes you could possibly make based on these numbers to impact your bottom line. Um, we've been starting to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations too with people who are using Pro and using Route Stats just to get feedback, see what they think. Some people are using it literally every day or every week. Other people have used it just a few times and made some tweaks and, you know, plan on revisiting it after peak. So different people are using it for different ways. And that's part of the reason I've been having one-on-one -on -one conversations is just to collect feedback and kind of understand the way you guys view this and what you want as far as features coming down the pipeline. I know something that a lot of people are excited about is the ground cloud fuel card. And the fuel card is going to be um, basically a credit card that's restricted for fuel only, as well as car washes and maintenance. And it's going to tie directly into ground cloud and directly into the route stats experience. And the overall goal is to basically collect all your expense data and combine it with the revenue data that we're already collecting with route stats. And that way we can really have the full picture where you're actually seeing your per profits on a driver basis and on a per route basis. So that's all coming really soon. We, uh, we're also close to having the payroll automation integration complete. Right now, not everybody's using it. I'll touch on it here, but our payroll automation is a really amazing tool just for saving a ton of time. I know there's a lot of contractors that use third parties for this, but ultimately with Ground Cloud, you're able to just go into your driver profile and with any driver, I'll just do it right now just to show you. And this is just a sample account. So we have a lot of our own employees and our own data from uh, contractors that are kind of within the ground cloud ecosystem. Some some contractors also work for ground cloud. So when you go to a driver and you go up top and you look at compensation, this is the way that you set up each driver. And as you can see, there's different ways to set the compensation. Um, just so everybody knows at the bottom, there's a message box. And if you have questions, put them in there and I'll periodically look at it and address any questions. If there's questions that I can't address, I'll just follow up who's ever asking them. And I'm gonna send an email also at the end of this. And we're gonna send an email this whole recording. And we'll also send an email with instructions of how to actually upload your data into route stats, which I'll also cover here. But anyway, back to payment types. You could choose between these different payment types and if one of the payment types that you guys want isn't in here, let us know and we could add it. So there's overtime, which we'll talk about in a second because you have to configure the overtime, but then there's hourly or stops, stop threshold, flat rate, flat rate and stop threshold. And these are different ways that are going to calculate your actual payroll. And um, you just set it up how you want it and the overtime configurations based on the state. We have it set to ours because this is our home state. So that's how you get the compensation set up for your drivers so you could take advantage of the payroll automation. And um, if you click on payroll automation, again, we aren't actually running any payroll because this is just a fake account, but you'll see the way it works is you have the drivers. This one's been configured, for example, which I'll show you guys in a second. But Andrew Heal, hourly, the one below, it's hourly or stops. And it's going to show the different columns, the hourly rate, the total hours. And you'll be able to just export this and either use our own integrated payroll, which we're going to have, and you'll be able to pay drivers right through Ground Cloud, or you could just export this and use it with whatever payroll company you're using, ADP, for example. And that way you have all that information front and center and you don't need to spend the time calculating it each week. So that'll be a nice thing to have. And then right below payroll automation, 
is where you do the overtime configuration. Let me move this down a little. And you could see right up here, you would create an overtime configuration, put a name for it, daily threshold. And, you know, just again, you, you're basically setting this based on your state laws. So you might want to consult with somebody from the labor department within your state about that. That's not necessarily something that we can give you advice on, but you're able to set up all that information within ground cloud once you do have that information. So that's how that works. And we'll talk about rat stats a little, um, well, a lot. That's what this whole thing is going to be about, because I really think that rat stats is something that is being utilized by, I'd say about 20% of the FedEx contractors right now that are like really taking the time to upload their data on a consistent basis. And they're also going through and actually using the data to make changes to their DRO. And there's constantly evolving things within your operations where there's different weeks where you can combine and consolidate different routes. And then there's different weeks where you can't. So there's different reasons to kind of constantly come back to this. And for starters, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the upload validation and well, the very first thing you're going to do is upload your files. And in order to upload your files, what you're exactly uploading, and again, I'm going to email this to you guys, but you're going to go to your My Biz account on FedEx, and you're going to log on to that account. And then you're going to download your charge statements. And what you're looking for is a PDF version of your charge statements. And for your very first upload, if you've never uploaded anything to RouteStats, you're going to want to just do your recent week. And then you're also going to want to download your DSW, your DSW, your daily service worksheet statements. And you're going to want to download those in Excel file for the same exact week. Once you are done downloading those two things, you literally just upload first the PDF file, then the Excel file. And then if it's your very first time doing it, it might take about 15 minutes for the entire thing to configure. And you don't need to stay on the page while it does it. But once you do it the first time, then you can go back and upload months or weeks worth of data, and it's going to do it somewhat instantly. So just go through that first stretch, get it up there, and then once you have it up there, you're good to go. Um, so this shows right here. As you can see, you could also upload multiple businesses if you do have multiple businesses and terminals. And this shows the one that we have is our demo one, Manchester. But if we did have more, they'd all be listed under here and you'd be able to see the updated history and when you have documents for. And then we'll go to overview. You know what? I'm going to actually work backwards this time because just to switch it up, we've done a bunch of these. I'm going to show you guys what all this stuff is. But I'm going to show you what I believe is the best tool about route stats. And we'll talk about why for a little bit. But it's that opportunity zone within route stats. And again, I'm going to work backwards. But the reason that I say this is what route stats is essentially all about is it's taking your data and it's making sense of it and then spitting it out to you and displaying it to you in a way that allows you to not only completely wrap your head around your business and know where your most profitable routes, most profitable drivers are, but it also allows you to see where the opportunities are. And internally, the way we look at this, and when we do one-on-one -on -one demos with people to really dive into their specific numbers, we're basically looking for specific days of the week that might have inconsistencies as far as our time on the road. So for example, what I'm gonna do, and the reason that I'm working backwards and normally you would first go through the other pages, which we will do, but when you go through the pages, you'll sometimes see that there's perhaps one, maybe two days of the week where you, where you ultimately could be um, consolidating routes. And when I say that is, and keep in mind, before I say anything, we know that there's individual circumstances for every business. So when you do look at this, this, this data, we do fully understand that 
there are some factors that play in that sometimes skew the data. For an example, you might have a manager that's going out and just running an hour's worth of route in that day, and he's still going to be in your data, but he's going to make that data seem skewed because that's not really a part of your operations, or maybe you're training a new driver and they're only doing a few hours their first week. So those are things that you guys know because it's your business and you'll be able to match up certain data points. But assuming that those things are kind of ironed out and you're just looking at this as what it is. We kind of look at it like if you could maximize seven and a half hours per route on the road in a given day, then you're kind of at your max level. You're not really able to put on any more packages for drivers or take away necessarily anyway, any more packages. Really, if you're averaging over seven per day per route, it's tough to necessarily come on here and make changes, even though over time that could change. But what a lot of contractors are seeing when they use this is they're seeing that there's perhaps one, maybe two days of the week where their averages are actually like around six hours instead of seven. And then what you're able to do, and I'm again, just going off of the last six months here, I'm going to click the last six months. So and you could click whatever data you want, but I'm just doing this for an example. And then I'm gonna come down, and make sure you match that up. So last six months. And then I'm gonna put in that seven and a half hours, which is what we call opportunity, which is what we were saying. Oh, let's see what happens if we just had max opportunity. We can lower it and play around with these numbers. But the first thing that we see, and this is just on a Monday, so we're just doing one day of the week here, is Normally, we were running at 7.27 hours, which, again, could, in some people's eyes, be max efficiency. I'm not saying that this is necessarily the best example. I'm just showing you how you could look at this. But in this example, this account is running 32 routes with the average on-road time being 7.2 hours. And you can see the revenue per route, $407.57. You can see all the metrics, stop per route, package per route. And then what we did was we put in seven and a half hours to see, well, what would happen if we did stretch out some of those center routes and gave some packages to the out tier drivers and kind of got rid of two in the middle and were able to do that if we could. And what happens is you cut out two routes and then your revenues per route obviously go up because there's more packages per route. But then what also happens is you're cutting down on driver pay for that route. You're cutting down on fuel, on workman's comp, maintenance. And this is just two routes on one day of the week. So it's really about 104 routes because they run these two routes every single week. And there's 52 weeks in the year and there's two of them. So when you really think about it, when you look at the expenses of just cutting out one route, and this is why we're so pumped about route stats, when you run a route, that's obviously what the main expenses are in this business, but just running one route on the low end is going to cost you for a year, just one day of the week, probably about like 18 to 20 grand. And on the high end, it could be as much as 100, depending on who the customer is and you know what your operations is like. So right now, more than ever, companies are looking for ways to really save money and in our opinion, the quickest way to do that, and it, again, it's not for everybody, but there's a lot of people who are buying existing businesses and they're looking under the hood and they're seeing, okay, like, are there changes I could make? Or there are people who have been running really good businesses for the last few years, but there's been some changes in the volume. So maybe it's a good time now to like take a really hard look at really what's going on in a given day. And if you're able to make these types of changes, the difference to the bottom line when you then think about what you could do throughout a whole week and we'll go to Wednesday, for example, same thing. And this is real data, by the way, this is off of one of the accounts that works within ground cloud that I was talking about there in West Virginia, but every single day of the week for this account, there was some sort of opportunity zone and it's not always going to be the case, but um, again, basically what you're able to do is take this and apply it to your DRO. And I will say for people that are really, really new to this, we're willing to help out with looking at your DRL with you. Not everybody at Ground Cloud is able to do that, but we do have a few people that are essentially expert consultants when it comes to the DRO. So if you're using this stuff and you're like, okay, like I see that I should probably cut out two routes or consolidate two routes on a, on a Tuesday for this month. 
but how do I do it? Well, we could help you with that. We just need to know and we can figure out like a one-on-one -on -one time and we'll work it out with you guys. So that's the opportunity zone. And I wanted to just show you it first because I think it's really valuable. And once you go through the other tabs, you can quickly come to the assumptions of what you actually need to plug into your opportunity. And it kind of pulls it all together and allows you to see it. And like I was saying in the future, what this will also consist of is profitability because it'll have the expenses plugged right into it. And I think that'll be really helpful. So let's now start from the beginning. And this is the overview page. So like I was showing you on the opportunity page, you guys could plug in any dates that you want. And, you know, you could just look at one day of the week, last 30 days, last 90. I'm going to just keep myself consistent here across the board and do last six months. And you could filter it out through business. So people who have multiple businesses listed with Ground Cloud, you could do it all under one. Same with terminals. And by terminals and drivers, you could just filter that out so you could see the specific information. And there's also some tabs that'll take you through here towards the end that are a little bit more driver specific, where if you wanna actually break down the driver data, you'll have that chance. So last 90 days, this is just the overall data I'm looking at, total revenue, revenue per route, revenue per stop, per mile, per delivered package, per pickup package. And there's different ways of visualizing this operations. It shows the total amount of routes, but then you know the, the amount of routes I'm actually running a day, which is closer to that 28 number. And you could just visualize the whole business. And the way we kind of describe this is, this lets somebody know what you're doing. If you ever wanted to pass this business down to your kids, for example, or if you were selling your business, having something like this allows an outsider who's viewing your business for the first time, trying to make sense of it, trying to see if it's valuable to them. It allows them to like grasp what you're actually doing outside of the operations. It allows them to kind of see the financials in just a quick snapshot. And it makes it just more that much more of a turnkey business. So if you're ever to want to sell the business, having something like this just makes it that much easier for the buyer to feel comfortable with what he's buying. Comparisons are great for a lot of different reasons. Um, for starters, and I'll just plug and play here, but I think there's a few different reasons that you could really use comparisons. The most obvious is during peak season. And what I really mean by that is being able to kind of compare what happened prior to peak a year ago compared to this year, for example, and seeing what that difference is and being able to forecast whether or not your business is going to increase during peak by 30% instead of maybe the 50 that FedEx might be telling you and, or maybe vice versa. And I'm just obviously throwing out numbers here, but once you put up the first week of data and upload that into ground cloud. You can upload all your data in seconds. You just have to download it. And we do hope we get to a point where that's all automated. Like we, what we did with the manifests where it just automatically happens. So you don't even need to go into your account. It's just all here for you. But being able to actually see what's happening in the months leading up to peak, allow you to potentially not over order on cameras, over hire, or on the other side of that, leave you underprepared. So, I think uh, there's different ways to use this. The other way that you could potentially use this is before doing some stuff with route stats. Like right now, for example, if you haven't used route stats to make any changes, this would be a good month to maybe look at. And then if you went in and made some changes, looking at the month after you make changes and you could see what you did, which is kind of what I did here. Like the overall revenue went down nothing to do with ground cloud because we're not involved in that part of it. But then you could see the revenue per route actually went up and all the, all the other metrics were in our favor, which allowed us to actually be more profitable, even though the revenue was down year over year. So you could also, like I was saying before, compare this on a per driver basis per day of the week. Right now I'm just doing a complete overview, but you can get really, really specific with this data and um, really see you know, for the driver, for example, if you see that in one of the other tabs, which I'll show you in a second, a driver is maybe, I don't want to call it underperforming, but maybe they're just not being as efficient as what your average driver is being. So you take some time and run a couple of routes with them and 
see what maybe what they're doing wrong and see what you can fix and you work with them. And then you want to go in and check what their data is the next month after you work with them. You see it's improved a lot. That's going to feel great. They're going to feel like, you know, you did some training and it actually worked out. So that's um, what comparisons is really all about. I'm going to real quick just just want to see if any questions have come in here. It's kind of at the bottom of my screen. No questions yet. Okay. Um, if anyone does have questions, feel free to put them in there. Can't promise you I'll be able to answer them, but for now, I'll take that as a good sign where people are just soaking it in. Days of the week. Okay, so same thing. Remember, every time you come to these pages, you have days, weeks, months, years. These are different ways to filter the data. And if you did want to just do calendar days, the way you do that is you just click and then click where you want it to go through and it'll just automatically drag it. But I'm going to go back to the six months and get rid of that. Okay. So Days of the week is essentially just more visualization, breaks it down by day of the week. It's going to show you what your actual average revenue was and what your average revenue on a per route basis was. So using this, you could see what some of your stronger routes are and what some of your weaker routes are. Same with uh, which days of the week are possibly weaker and stronger. And again, you could filter it out by driver. And you can filter it out by business and terminal. You'll see that across the board. Um, this is obviously really interesting down here because going back to the opportunity section, this right here shows us what all the opportunity is without us needing to guess. So in the last six months, and I know, you know, some days are their own weird issues with FedEx. Who knows if they're going to keep some days or get rid of them. It's tough to get a read on the new CEO at that. But even if you look at Saturdays and you look at Sundays, these are days where the averages just don't seem like they're as good as they could be. And, you know, maybe if you only have four routes, it's tough to really do anything about this. But once you get up into that eight plus route range, there's so many opportunity to just make sure that everyone's being as efficient as possible. And then you're able to cut out some routes like we were talking about before. So down here, dispatch analysis, this is going to show you average routes, average stops, average packages, average miles. And you could, if you want, filter any of these out. So if you want to just look at one of them for whatever reason, it'll show you average routes and, um, you know, just more visualizations for you guys. And then down here, a, a few more route average analysis that you'll see. And Keep in mind, like not all of this is stuff that you necessarily need to look at all the time. I think certain people are going to find certain parts of this more useful than others. I think the average on road hours is one of the most useful tools that you could possibly find on here. So that's a good one for sure. Um, but down here, you know, it's going to break it down per day of the week. It'll show you what the actual stops are. And the reason this is important, and we'll talk about this more on the next couple pages, but you know, we're not right now showing you the size of the package. And you get eventually we're hoping to have that data, but you guys know that some of the routes you might run are really rural. And not only are they really rural, but you might have a few routes that are oversized package routes. And that's the reason that it just is what it is. And there's not necessarily much you could do with that. We understand that and we're not telling you that, you know, you could always make changes, but more so trying to just make the data easy to analyze. So if you feel like there are certain things outside of that type of scope, you're able to go in there and do what you have to do to be more profitable. So day of week volume analysis. Again, I'm going to plug in the last six months. This is pretty cool because it breaks down what your um, average stop mixes per day of the week based on whether or not it's e-commerce, ground, pickup, density. And when you look at the average stop mix, it oftentimes looks like it's e-commerce. But as you guys know, when you actually break down the average package mix per day of the week, it's way more ground-based and pickup-based. So uh, it, this is just more information for you guys to have front and center. And then again, another display of average per route that has a little bit more information. So same 
bottom, same overall theme as the last page, average per hours, Sunday and Saturday. Those are clearly the opportunity days, but um, just displayed in different ways. And then the next couple of pages are going to be more per driver basis. Well, so what it's going to do is, let me first plug in the months. And again, you filter it out by business terminal or driver, but this is going to essentially show you your stats for your drivers. So at the top, the graph is your stop per hour and mile, and that's for all the different drivers. And um, obviously the ones with the huge spikes, you know, there, I'm sure there's reasons behind that. You guys might know what they are, but if there's not reasons behind that, that could be something interesting to look into. Um, and then down below, same thing. Like we understand the manager could be running overflow. Is the driver new? Are you doing some training? Large package route that increases capacity in other trucks, things like that. But um, outside of that, this is really a good way for you to see, okay, which drivers are really making me the most money or being the most efficient, which drivers are maybe lagging a little bit. And you guys can kind of come to your own assumptions with that and see what needs to be done, if anything. more data on the individual drivers, but broken down on a per revenue basis and instead of timing and stops. So again, you could just really see right here who is bringing in the most revenue for your, for your company. And I can't wait until we include all the other expenses in this so you can actually see profits because it doesn't matter if when Dunham is bringing in $764, if he's costing me a thousand. Whereas if Mandy Weirich is bringing in 104, but costing me $2. I want way more of that in my life. So, I mean, these are just different ways to look at it, but um, it's so, so it's crazy because so many of you guys have such big businesses where you have all these employees, all these vehicles, huge operations. The average contractor really has a really big business when you think about it. So the, it, there's just a lot of opportunity to either have perhaps extra fat or to have such a tight ship where you're profiting an extra few hundred thousand dollars a year because you're maybe able to cut out 15 routes in a week if you're one of the contractors that's running you know 30 routes in a day which we've seen people make those kind of changes i've also had some conversations with people who have admitted that you know in, unless you have driver churn it's sort of tough to make changes because Drivers are super reluctant to want to make changes. And that's obviously a super sensitive topic in its own right. I mean, I know there's all different ways to approach that, but you know, you guys are the owners of the business. So you guys are in those types of positions where you have to make those kind of difficult decisions. And sometimes it is just best to wait until there's churn, but other times, sometimes just right now, you know that the best thing that the business needs is a way to consolidate some routes and you run the numbers and see how much money it would save you. And it, it might just be something that makes the most sense. Um, this shows stops per route and packages per route. So the last three pages are showing you different levels of driver data that are going to be important just based on what it is you're trying to analyze. So obviously stops per route gives you an idea and same with packages. If what we're dealing with here is this a high urban area and are there a lot of packages in a short distance amount of time is it an overload where you know there's a lot of large packages and a bulk route so these are things that again only you guys know because it's it's your business behind the scenes but allows you to come to those conclusions and then the last thing is driver profile me So a lot of what we've been kind of talking about and just sort of summarizes it all up and shows you your averages when you put them all together. You could obviously filter this out by driver, but this is going to just group them together as a whole. And ultimately, then we go back to this opportunities page, which we'll visit one more time now that I showed you guys everything else. And it's obvious that the best days of the week to possibly make changes are Sunday. 
So if we were to do that Sunday, we'd be able to cut out a route. And Sunday, we only have 13 routes. So cutting out a route on Sunday, even though it's one, that actually kind of seems more impressive than when we were able to cut it out when, you know, there were 32 or 33, because that's basically cutting out 10% of our operations and still being able to run the same efficiencies. So Saturday, similar type thing. And then if we get to Tuesday, we're cutting two routes, but that's actually less than 10% of the operation. So it's even though it's two, it's not quite as uh, as beneficial, really, even though it is, but you guys kind of get what I'm saying with that. So that sums up route stats. Let me bring you guys back up here because I'll review at the bottom of my screen. Just pull up the questions, see if anybody's been asking anything. Sorry, just bear with me for a second. Okay, here we go. Some questions. Can we compare our old contract and the new one for renegotiations? So if you can kind of elaborate on what you mean with that, obviously the negotiations between you and FedEx or between you and FedEx, are you able to make good data points that show FedEx whether or not the business that you're paying for is increasing or decreasing in the last two years? using this absolutely if that's what you meant i'm not sure if that's what you meant so if you want to clarify i'm happy to answer them um do we need to upload our past history if so how far back do we go that's in, you do need to upload your history if you want to see historic data if you're really just looking to look at your current data and then make decisions based on what's happening right now then you know maybe putting in the last month um i think for looking at comparisons if you're talking about what we were just discussing with Peak before, then yeah, you'll want to go maybe as far back as a full year's worth of data. Um, I, we, we've seen different things. We've seen contractors kind of just start using this in maybe August or September, again, October. And from the time they start using it, they upload all the current data. And that way, that's what they have. And some people have uploaded, you know, a couple of years worth of data. And there is going to be a day where it's all automated. It's just, I don't know when, but that'll obviously make this a lot easier. But any data you want to be able to see needs to be uploaded. Any other questions? Okay, we got a few more. Is there a way to tag routes as AVPs so that we view them separately from standard routes? Right now, my overall average stats have been lowered by having my AVP in there. Also, it throws off my comparison to last year's data. Okay, I'm gonna pass this on to our developers. I know tagging routes is coming very soon, and it's uh, one of the main features that's about to be rolled out. But Adam Ward, I will pass on the rest of this request about the AVPs and get back to you about it in a in a one-on-one -on -one email. Um, and we have a follow-up to the comparison of the old contract to the new contract. And that is plugging our old rates to the new rates they are proposing to when we are renegotiating to see if the overall revenue will go up or down and by how much. Um, let me just read that again. Plug in old rates to the new rates they are proposing to see. So with route stats, you're not at the moment at least incorporating what you're paying FedEx directly. Um, you could obviously add that as just a side note when you're analyzing this data. So I don't know if that answers your question because you're not necessarily plugging in your rates at all with route stats. That could be something for our team to definitely look into adding, but there's no doubt what you could use route stats for is a way to look at previous data and see what the trends have been. So if you are talking to FedEx and again, I can't give you advice on how to negotiate your contract with FedEx, but if you're negotiating a contract with FedEx, what route stats can do is give you a very 
clear way to visualize and present your data to make a strong case for whatever it is you're trying to make a case for. Um, does that answer your question? And then while he types, we have a, uh, if we have any other questions later on, how do we go back? And email? Oh yeah, of course. So you guys feel free to email me directly if you want. My email is, I'll put this in the chat, but it's dan, D-A-N dot Roland, R-O-L-L-A-N-D at groundcloud.com. I'm happy to answer any questions. You could also say sales at groundcloud.com. Then somebody from my team will look at the questions and get back to you. And, you know, we'll probably also reach out to you guys one-on-one. -on -one. Really trying to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations here just to hear what people think and hear what any suggestions that they have and things like that. But definitely feel free to reach out to us whenever you have any questions, if you didn't think of them during this presentation. And when you go to actually look at your data, you know, if you did want somebody to maybe dive into your DRO with you, it's something we could definitely arrange with someone on our team. What are people thinking about this overall? If uh, you wouldn't mind just putting in a couple messages about that. There's not a way to delete drivers that are not active anymore. Um, it, you could only deactivate them, but not delete them. I, we do get that question a lot. So I'll definitely let the developers know. I feel like it's something everyone wants. So I'll see if that's something that could be added as far as driver deletion goes. I hear you, Asha, for sure. I mean, that's that's good uh, feedback right there. Can we schedule a training session with your DRO team in hours? Yeah, we can. Um, John, why don't you send me an email and we will definitely set up a time and figure out the best way of doing that together. It looks powerful. So someone said, I assume the efficiencies are harder to improve with the smaller operation. It depends. I mean, you know, it depends how small the operation is. If you have one route, then there might not be much use for this. But we've seen people even with, you know, five or six routes really improve their efficiencies. It, it, it really depends on your individual situation. We'd be happy to dive into it with you. Um, I really think if you upload your data and kind of go through some of the tabs we were just looking at together, then you might see if there's opportunity and there might not be, but there might really be. And, you know, the, the good thing about running a smaller operation is if let's say you are running five routes and you're seeing like, okay, is there any opportunity with this? Well, if you're running five routes and let's say your average route per day, when you extrapolate it out over the years, let's just say 20 grand. So you're spending a hundred grand on your actual expenses. I'm just throwing out numbers. It's probably a little bit higher when you work in your actual employee cost, workman's comp, fuel. So the beauty at five is if you're somehow able to randomly get rid of a route just one day of the week, you just saved 20% on your expenses with that part of your business. So it, the, the changes you're able to make have a much bigger impact because you, you have much smaller expenses. So I, I'd say even for smaller people, it, it is powerful for sure. Um, and yeah, Asha, definitely email me about one off schedule and we'll, we'll get this using, we'll get you using this more. And Adam, I appreciate that feedback. The revenue per route has been extremely helpful. After I got my new contract and had lower rates, I use route stats to consolidate routes to get my average. I mean, I love hearing that. That's awesome. So uh, that's the whole goal here is being able to use this to make some tweaks to your business. And hearing that people are doing that is getting our team very excited and giving them the energy to get all these features rolled out so it could be a full finished product for you guys. So this has been awesome. I'll stay on for another minute or so in case anybody has any other questions, but um, we're also recording this. So I'm gonna send a recording of all this to you guys. I'll include the recording, the instructions for how you upload your data, just to run that through. It's really easy, but step-by-step -step thing you do on your MyBiz account. And, you know, we're always here for you guys for questions, even if it's outside of pro and about any of the other features.
Cool. Well, I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for spending this last 40 minutes with me. We, uh, we look forward to chatting with you guys more and enjoy the rest of your Thursday.